Hello fiber friends and welcome to the Jilly and Eve channel. I'm Evie, I spin yarn and I make things from yarn. Today I would like to show you a little walkthrough of how I do a little miniature breed study. I say miniature because this is going to be a little sample but that means that we can do the whole process from raw wool to finished yarn and that's what we're up to today. But first let's talk about what a breed study is, especially for any new spinners who are joining us. You might say, breed study? What? <laughs> well, just think about dogs. Think about how many different breeds of dogs there are and how some dogs are very small like Chihuahuas and some are very large like a Mastiff. Some have long fur and some have short fur. Some have different coats of inner coats and outer coats. Well, sheep are similar in that there is a huge variety of sheep breeds. And just like we have different colors of dogs and different lengths of their fur, etc., we have this similar thing going on with sheep. Sheep have been bred to have different characteristics in their wool to do different things. A sheep that is growing wool that would be really good for using in a carpet might not be the same sheep that grows wool that would be really good for maybe some luxurious fabric that's going to touch your skin. You don't want that to be itchy. Um, so we have a lot of different breeds of sheep for a lot of different purposes. When we do a breed study, we take one breed of sheep and we take that from a raw lock of wool. Raw means cut off the sheep. It hasn't been washed or anything. And we go through the whole process of cleaning it, scouring, preparing it for spinning, which means combing or carding or something similar, spinning it, and then taking a look at that final yarn, often sampling that final yarn to get a good look at the fabric and say, what might this be good for? What purpose would be best to match up with this wool? So <laughs> that's what we're up to today. A very generous fiber friend has sent me a sample of her sheep's wool. Fiber friend Karen, thank you so much for your generosity in sending this wool to me. Thank you so much for letting me do a little breed study. Karen raises Tunis sheep and we're going to take a look at that breed today. This is what the raw wool looks like that Karen has sent to me. It's from a two-year-old ram. The first thing I like to do when I do a breed study is to get my initial feel for the wool. I like to touch it. I like to uh, pull on it to see how springy it feels. I like to uh, tip it a little bit in the light and see if there's a luster to it, how shiny it is. I want to see how soft it feels. And I want to take a look at the crimp, the structure of the wool. Is it loose and open or is it kind of held together like in a block? kind of a formation? <laughs> or is it crimpy? Or is it curly? Is it coarse? Is it consistent? All of those things. I want to get my initial impression of that wool. The next thing that I do when I'm exploring a specific breed of sheep is turn to the best resource <laughs> for exploring specific breeds of sheep. That is the Fleece and Fiber source book. So I am going to look up Tunis because you can look up any breed of sheep and it will give you a whole bunch of information about where the sheep comes from, why it was developed as a breed, any historical tidbits and facts, and then it also gives a good look at how the how the wool washes up and different ways that it looks in finished projects. I also really love that this book has a knitted swatch as well as a woven swatch. And so depending on how much yarn I end up with, I might try and do one of each, but we'll see. I'm not sure if I'll have enough yardage for that, but we'll see. We'll try. So just a couple things about the American Tunis sheep. It is a conservation breed. That means that the numbers are pretty low and so there's specific efforts going to keep this sheep and its breed um, to keep it going, to keep it alive. It was developed from Tunisian Barbary sheep. It's an ancient breed that dates back to biblical times. The original Tunisian Barbary sheep came to North America from North Africa in 1799. Wow! <laughs> These have been here a while. As a gift to the United States government from His Highness, 
the Bay of Tunis, and George Washington is said to have used a Tunis ram to rebuild his Mount Vernon flock after he reti retired from the presidency. So there's definitely some history with this sheep. I really love looking at history through wool because wool was such a commodity. Like it was so important. It was clothing. It was literally the shelter of people's bodies. And it was also fashion. It was so important. And I think today we're so removed from our clothing and the construction of it and the history of it and, you know, just the production of clothing in general that we don't always think back to pre-industrialized cultures and societies how important sheep were to just survival <laughs> and also to whatever country it happened to be, like their financial economic systems, sheep were critically essential around the world. It's really fascinating. I'm down a rabbit hole. Let's get back to this breed study. Something that I do find interesting about this breed is that it's not a bright white wool, but it's an off-white to a creamy tan color. Lambs are born all red and that color fades out as they get older. So let's take this wool to the kitchen where I will be scouring this wool. Scouring simply means that we are going to remove the lanolin from the wool. And of course, because we're washing out the lanolin, we're getting the other stuff out of there as well. Any uh, biological things that happen from sheep existing, especially if you're working with the tail end of things, and also sweat and whatever sheepy things that sheep happen to get into. We want to clean all of that out of the fleece and off of the wool. We don't want that in our final products. So we are going to scour that out with some hot water. I usually like to go around 120 degrees. We don't want to go full on boiling. We want to keep it under the boil temperature, but we want it to be hot enough to get that lanolin off of there. I use a scour solution called Unicorn Power Scour. It is specially formulated to clean lanolin off of wool. There's a variety of products out there. Unicorn Power Scour is probably up there in terms of budget, but it's definitely a product that I stand by. It does a great job and it doesn't make my wool feel harsh when I'm done scouring it. It doesn't, it doesn't fry my wool, so to speak. Once we have gotten all of this lanolin grease, sweat, and icky bits out of the wool, we are going to uh, give it a good rinse and make sure that everything is cleaned up. I swear by my salad spinner, wool holds a lot of water, and if I just take it straight out of the water and let it dry, it could take a week, especially if it's humid. So this salad spinner really removes a lot of the excess water. We want to be careful not to agitate the wool and scrub it around a whole lot for two reasons. It could felt, and also because we want to keep that lock structure as much as we can. That will help when we are getting it ready for spinning. A beautiful sunny day helps my wool dry very quickly. Sometimes I use some tool to just clip over the top of it and that keeps it from blowing away or getting uh, stolen away by any critters in the backyard. With the wool all scoured and cleaned up, it's time to prepare it for spinning. That's the next step. And I say cleaned up with a little chuckle because there's definitely still a lot of little bits of vegetable matter in here. Hay and bits of vegetable matter don't get scoured out during the scouring process. The best way to deal with that is to use hand combs. Combs look pretty evil, <laughs> but they are fantastic at removing vegetable matter. So that's what I'm going to do. These are uh, Valkyrie and they are fine combs. They are fine. Uh, that has to do with how far apart and close the tines are to each other and uh, these are going to work great for this wool and let's see what it looks like to comb a couple locks of wool and you'll be really amazed at how clean these get that wool. It, all that vegetable matter and bits of stuff, they're gonna be gone. It's almost like magic.
here's my wool all combed out. It is just lovely. It has such a little floof to it. There's a little a little uh, grip to it and I love that. That's from all of the crimpiness that it has. And I think this is going to make a very bouncy yarn. I can't wait to see how it spins up, but I have another lock to go. So to remove these from the combs, I like to pull a little bit, pull a little bit. And this is getting it started for the drafting that will happen at the spinning wheel. And I just pull a little bit, pull a little bit. You can use a diz for this as well, but I find that it goes pretty quick if I just do it by hand. Now once I'm getting to the stuff that's been caught on the other side of the tines there, I am getting a few pieces of vegetable matter um, that did get through, but it's only a little piece here or there, and that'll be very easy to pluck out during the spinning. So I roll it into a little nest and it is ready to spin. Look how lovely. It's just a little floof, a lovely little floof. Makes me so happy. Here's what I have after I finished combing. Now all of this fluff over here is very fluffy, but it is full of the little short bits and the vegetable matter and the snarls and any broken pieces of wool. Sometimes the tips can be a little brittle. This fleece wasn't too bad, but um, there's always a little of that going on. That is not what I want to focus on though. This is what I want to focus on. Look at how beautiful and clean, well, except for maybe one or two little stowaways here and there, um, how beautiful and clean this wool is after combing. It really does get all of the bits of hay and dirt that have hung on after scouring. It really gets all of that out, and this is ready for a lovely spin. So I am going to pull up my Ashford Elizabeth in double drive and I am going to spin up a little sample with this wool. After a lovely worsted spin with this American Tunis wool, I had a little bit on the bobbin that I wanted to two-ply, but I didn't want to affect the twist in any weird way, so I used a bracelet plying method to uh, get this into a nice even two-ply with nothing left over. I really enjoyed spinning this wool because of the bounciness that it has. It drafted very easily. It didn't feel like it was sticking to itself in any way. Um, and I, I really had a pleasant spin with this. I like this wool very much. The yarn itself seems to kind of bubble up in a way. <laughs> like it has a series of little beads on it. And I think that means that I did a pretty good job getting the right amount of twist for this wool. It's not ropey, it's not too loose, it has good spring and bounce, and it would be wonderful to work with either in a woven project or in a knitted project. But the amount of wool that I have here I think would be perfect for a small knitted swatch, and so that is what I am going to do with it. My wraps per inch came around 11 or 12, so it's about a DK or a sport weight yarn. I put about 12 
stitches on my needles. Uh, they were size US 8 needles. Again, this was just a small little knitted swatch, but it does give me a reference that I can put into my own little swatched reference library slash breed studies. And I can take a look at this if I want to use it for a future project to get a good idea of what the bounce and the drape of this yarn feels like, um, how the fabric feels. Is it going to be soft enough or durable enough for the project that I want to put it in? It gives me a lot of information when choosing wool for a future project. If you're interested in doing a large project, starting from a raw fleece and going all the way through to a finished cardigan or sweater or other large project, I do have a workshop that I run on my Patreon. I'll have a link for that down below. You can check it out. Another huge thank you to Karen for sending this wool to try out. I have saved it on a little card and I can attach this little card with the sample of the yarn to the little swatch that I have. And along with that, along the way, I did keep a lock of the raw wool and a lock of the washed wool, just like they have in the fleece and fiber source book. I think that gives a lot of information, but this was a wonderful little breed study I enjoyed it so much. If you have the chance to work with some American tuna sheep, I highly recommend it. I enjoyed it, like I said. All right, friends, I'll see you in the next one. Happy spinning!